Good morning, Wakefield, and welcome to the July 13th meeting of the Wakefield Town Council. I call this meeting to order, and I'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, for which it stands one, nation, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. Thank you. Um, looking at the attendance of town council, I see we're all here, full seven. Um, and so at this time, we will be going into executive session. Um, and Tom, I should have, Tom Mullen, I should have asked you this. Shall I read what's on the agenda? Yes, please. Okay. Um, we're going into, I need these, executive session. Um, for discussion of town's legal strategy and litigation concerning Woods subdivision. Um, when we, uh, I'll take a roll call vote to enter. We'll be gone for a short time if you want to stick around and then we'll come back in um, as soon as we're finished with that. So a roll call, I need a motion to enter executive session, please. So moved. Um, so moved by Paul. Second. Seconded by Jonathan. Roll call vote, Peter. Yes. Jonathan. Yes. Julie. Yes. Paul? Yes. Ed? Aye. Hey, and Ma uh, Maureen? Yes. And myself, yes. So at this point, we'll go into executive session. Councillor Bud, if you could accept the invite to the breakout room. Thank you. Okay, we are now in executive session, so uh, we will remain here until the councillors have finished, and we will then resume the meeting as scheduled.
Brian, can you let me know if we are all back in session? I'm having trouble just seeing the screen. Will do. Almost. Looks like we are waiting on Councillor Butt and Councillor May. Ryan, can you hop in there just maybe assist? Uh, everyone should be back now. Excellent. Okay, great. If you'd like to bring down the full screen. Perfect. Um, thank you all for bearing with us during our executive session. Um, I, Sherry, do we have anyone for public engagement? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, sounds good. Um, thank you. So we will move to approval of um, several minutes. I need a motion and a second to approve first the June 22nd, 2020 town council meeting minutes. So moved. Moved by Jonathan. Second. Seconded by Paul. Um, Steve, can, or Tom, can we do the three as one vote? Oh, mute, mute Tom. Yes, you can. My only concern would be one of these is executive session. If there's a problem with that, you might actually have to go into executive session to discuss the, the problem. Okay, we'll do we'll do the two regular ones as one vote then. Okay. okay. Um, uh, so could I have a, a motion and a second to approve the June 22nd and June 29th, 2020 town council meeting minutes? So moved, Madam Chair. Second. Moved by Jonathan, seconded by Paul. Roll call vote. Um, Jonathan. Yes. Paul. Yes. Ed. Yes. Maureen. Yes. Julie. Yes. Peter. Yes. Yes, myself. Um, yeah. Unanimous approval on those minutes. And could I also please have a motion and a second to approve the June 29th, 2020 Town Council Executive Meeting Minutes? So moved. Moved Damn. by Paul. Second by Peter. Um, roll call, Jonathan. Yes. Paul. Yes. Ed. Yes. Maureen. Yes. Julie. Yes. And Peter. Yes. And myself as well. Unanimous on those as uh, well, Sherry. Thank you. Um, I have a, a quick update on item seven um, on the youth council. And I see Alyssa Toffee has joined us. She doesn't have to say anything, but um, I had a Zoom meeting with Alyssa, who's a member of the youth council. Um, and as you, as you recall, um, we appointed, um, you created and then appointed the youth council um, in this past year. And it was really great to talk to Alyssa and hear her ideas. Um, looking forward to hearing ideas from more of the council. Um, in this COVID chaos, they are still really focused on sustainability issues, the environment as that generation should be. Um, so it was exciting to hear some of her excitement over that and ideas she had when going back into school. There's Alyssa. Hey. Um, we also talked about um, when school starts, perhaps the council having a town hall so that students could ask us questions. And I thought that would be something um, great and fun to do, that we could participate, the Youth Council could organize it, and we could participate um, answering really questions about anything about the town, um, how government works, town government works. So um, that was something exciting Alyssa and I spoke about. Um, they're planning to put together a newsletter. Um, they meet every three weeks-ish as Alyssa said, um, I think July 22nd at 4 p.m. is their next meeting. But um, briefly, Alyssa, do you want to say anything or? Um, yeah, I guess. Good. Why not? Hi, everybody. My name is Alyssa Toffee. I'm going to be a senior at the high school this fall. Um, I'm really excited that Youth Council is happening, even though it's still awkward beginning phases plus over Zoom. But I was really excited to get started and I'm excited to collaborate with you guys and help you see her. Great. Excellent. Thank you so much, Alyssa. Um, and we also talked about, you know, Alyssa asked what we would like to see from the council. And I said, just hearing what the 
her generation is concerned about and, and so that they can pr bring issues to us is really exciting. So I think the collaboration is wonderful. Um, so I look forward to working with um, the members of the Youth Council to try to get something going once school starts, um, whether it's on Zoom or whether it's, um, you know, dare I say in person. Um, so we'll, we'll see on that. Um, but Alyssa, thank you so much and, and keep in touch and we'll keep this um, work going. Does anyone, before I move off, um, does anyone have any questions for Alyssa? No? Great. Excellent. Um, okay, moving to item number eight, our COVID-19 updates. So we're gonna hear from um, Ruth and Tom are here, as well as, is Steve, is Catherine joining us or she just sent in a memo? She was going to join us. Um, that was my impression, but okay. she's not there yet. So let me. But that's see. okay. She, if she yeah. jumps in later, we can grab her too from the library um, to just get an update on what was happening there. Um, but for now, um, Ruth, you wanna jump in? Sure. Um, so as of today, our cumulative number of cases um, are 322. We actually had three new cases today, which is unusual. Um, and in addition to those three new cases, three active cases um, and 31 deaths. So total is 322. 31 deaths, which is 10%, mm -hmm. three new cases today, and a, with those, a total of six active cases. Um, that's case report. We are, we're, our public health nurse is doing the um, contact tracing at this point. So the school nurses, um, unless we get another surge, they uh, are not going to be doing that right now. We have about eight or $9,000 to spend with COVID money that was given to us as part of a health district, given us up front. So I'm working with Tom uh, to come up with a list of things to spend, which we have to spend by the end of August. Uh, and we're responding to occasional complaints about either uh, people not wearing masks or restaurants whose tables are not six feet apart. So we are responding to those as they come in. You know, it's only been a little over a week for the restaurant, so a little bit of a growing pain, but, uh, and we are starting to go back and doing routine uh, restaurant inspections because I haven't been inspected in a long time. So uh, we're, we're doing that on a risk category basis. So highest risk ones, um, and then going down to the lowest risk ones. Um, anything from, is there anything we can do that we haven't been doing to assist you? No, I think everybody's been very supportive. That's the main thing is so when we get pushback, which one restaurant did give us some pretty significant pushback, as long as we're all on the same team and we're all saying the same thing, then it's all good. Great, excellent. Thank you, Ruth. Um, Tom. Sorry, just had a uh, unmute. Uh, everything is is fairly well. Um, we actually had a uh, reentry team meeting this morning and uh, town hall is in very good shape. Uh, we have retained the hours. We open Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 12.30. We have a greeter uh, that uh, meets the people at the door, see if they have an appointment, directs them uh, to where they should be, takes their information by uh, the governor's orders. We have to maintain so for that contact tracing. So that's been good. We've had a high of as many as 100 and something have come in one day and as low as like 30. So right now the average is probably in the 60s, but you know, it's been pretty smooth. I hadn't had a problem. As far as for protection of our employees, 
All of our protective measures are now in place. They've been installed. Uh, I think we've only had one uh, minor problem, and that's be fixed this week with one, one department on uh, a correction, which is uh, easily done. Um, so as far as, as far as town hall, I feel very confident that we've not only protected our people, our employees that are working, but also the uh, public coming in. Uh, the rest of the buildings, uh, Civic Center opened. They've been working uh, probably from 8 to 1230 every day. Uh, they started some programs uh, within the state guidelines. They've opened up uh, a basketball program, uh, taught soccer. They have a, what they call a drop-by program. So all those have been in effect, all those within the guidelines. And then all the renters that we have in the building have been uh, back and forth. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club have been basically staying on the outside, you know, and only when they have inclement weather, they've been coming in. But again, uh, in, under the direction of the state guidelines. So that's been working well. And the rest of the, uh, of the renters have been doing okay as well. Uh, public safety building, uh, police and fire both been working. Uh, uh, with their regular business uh, at this point in time, uh, gun permits are uh, huge for the police. So, you know, they've, they've got a ton of people coming in. Fire end of its uh, fire inspections, they've been taking care of it. So that business has been usual over there. The only thing we don't have open is the, uh, the community room, which we, we can't open. It's just impossible to, to take care of it at this point in time. So that is, that is closed at this point, this juncture. Uh, as far as the rest of our buildings, uh, the library, uh, they are doing curbside pickup, and I believe they're going to start with a collaboration with the Council on Aging to start doing some home delivery of, of materials, and uh, that should start up very shortly. And, uh, but, you know, until we get real clear guidance from the state, I don't see much more happening. And the building is just so unique in how everything that you do there, you touch. So it's very, uh, it's very hard to keep our, our own people safe, let alone the public coming in. So until we get, you know, uh, until we get some type of real normalcy coming back, I think that building being one of the last that we have fully open. Same with the senior center. Senior center has been seeing people. They've been taking people to medical appointments. Uh, they uh, opened up the computer room by appointment only, and they've been servicing people there. And now they're going to start opening their gym up. They'll let, you know, one person in to uh, take care of the gym. And then after each uh, visit, they'll then go in, clean and sanitize. So people will be getting uh, functional out of that. They'll also, uh, full protective measures for all the employees at the senior center will be up and operational this week. They've been distancing anyway. It's a pretty large building, but we'll have all the protective measures in place by the end of the week. So all of our buildings should be up and running, protecting all of our employees. Um, as far as that goes, I think um, that takes care of that end of it. As far as our departments, every, all the departments have been working great together. Uh, kudos to Ruth and her, her crew. I mean, not only are they responding to all of the, uh, the, you know, the contract tracing or uh, the inspections and everything, but this is the time of the year that we got a new thing like this, so all their permits would do, so they take care of all their permits. So the amount of work that they've been doing is incredible. So, I mean, kudos to them. But I mean, our police and fire, you know, our health, our IT, DPW, communications have all been working together. It's a great team and everybody's been doing it naturally being led by, you know, the town administrator who's been giving us some great support as well as the council. So uh, as far as I can see, we're in good shape. It's just gonna be a slow, uh, continuous motion going further in. I don't really see a return in normalcy for some time. Um, we're trying to do what we can. I don't see um, uh, public gatherings being uh, anywhere in the near future. It's just it's just impossible to do kind of the purpose of what we've been doing so far. That's what we have. Tom, thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, and I didn't even have you introduce yourself for anyone new who's watching. <laughs> oh, Tom Walsh, Emergency Management Director. Time to work with. Okay. Um, and before we move on to Catherine, for both Tom and Ruth, I assume as we approach, we get closer to September, will you be working closely with the schools to figure out how to do that? Or is that another department? No, the school department is supposed to be doing their plans in conjunction with the Board of Health. Okay. So yes. 
the I, I'm on the crisis team. We actually have a meeting tomorrow at nine. The last uh, meeting we had, uh, basically, the state told them they had to, you know, come up with three plans. So uh, I feel very sorry for the school department because they just have no rest. They got to develop three separate plans depending on which way it goes. So it's very difficult. They have a lot of work ahead of them. But everything, uh, I guess, let, let me just explain it this way. Any plans that are developed in the town uh, right now, we're on a declared emergency have to go through Ruth and myself, as well as the town administrator, because any plan developed now is an emergency plan. So it has to be signed off. So that's why everyone's working in a, in a good collaboration to get, I mean, to get these things done. So and everybody has been very cooperative in, in, in this venture as well. Okay. And can I jump in? We've talked about the schools. Yep. I was gonna mention this at the end. Uh, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, there is a um, Zoom call with um, Commissioner Riley uh, at the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. This was set up by Senator Lewis. Um, I'm hoping to get a little inkling of some more, clar uh, some more clarification um, tomorrow when that happens. If any members of the council would like to um, participate in that, um, please email me and I'll email you the link and you can get on there. So hopefully we'll get some good things there because that is a huge issue. I agree. Um. Does any member of the council have questions for Tom or Ruth before we move to Catherine in the library? Um, Julie, I see your hand up. Thank you for everything you're doing. Um, my one question has to do with porta potties. Very exciting. Um, you know, we've gotten some inquiries around and complaints around people. You know, there's no access to porta potties, so relieving themselves around the lake. It's it's awful. Um, but is there an actual rule that says we can't put porta potties in? I mean, is there a way that we can put them in and people use them at their own risk and we maintain them? I feel like there's a need for them down there. Oh, there is. Um, the Cumberland Farms has a bathroom that's open to the public at one end of the lake. Okay. And there is a porta potty in the summer. With, for the farmer's market at the other end of the lake. My understanding is the farmer's market one is locked and only accessible to farmer's market staff. Oh, that's possible. Yeah, that's correct. So I would really like us to look into maybe putting one there or putting one back over by Spalding Park. I, I understand there's, you know, risks and I, and if there's liability to the town, let's talk about it. But I, I, I feel like people need to be outside and I'm a runner and there is nowhere to go in town other than, you know, Cumberland, I am aware of, perhaps into the safety building, but it's very difficult on people. So maybe we could look into that. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions or comments? Um, all right. Good. Thank you uh, very much, Tom and Ruth, for providing these updates and doing such a fabulous job. Thank you. Um, Catherine. Do you want to talk a little bit about the library and what's going on? Sure. I think Tom said a lot of what you would need to know. Um, I can tell you a little bit and then you can ask me questions if you would like. I really appreciate the town's coordination. The coordination has been the fact that I there are people I can go to. Um, we're all doing the same thing. The way the library is working, um, the Board of Trustees um, came up with a, a six point plan, a phased plan with me, and it works in concert with what the town is doing. And the way that the library has reopened, we've used um, different phases as they apply to us. So the return to work was like an office phase. And now doing the curbside pickup is a little bit like the retail phase. Um, how we would get into any further phase, I am finding it very difficult to see at this point. So we're just gonna kind of watch and see what happens and try to keep an open, um, an open door to the public. So if they have needs and we know what they are, um, defined needs, we may be able to solve those problems. Um, as Tom mentioned just today, I spoke with Judy Luciano and we set up that um, a delivery. We have three people who do homebound delivery and um, 
Judy's group is going to do that. And they, and that's wonderful because they know what they're doing. They know the protocols. Um, it's all there. It's, it's safe because we know what's happening. There's a whole procedure and, um, we like that there's procedures and we can kind of control whatever we can control because there's so much that we can't. Um, right before I came on this meeting, I had a text message from the head of circulation who said there were 755 items ready for pickup. There were 60 slots a day and a thousand new items have been processed. So it's a small amount of people who are doing that. So that's, that's pretty good. We're getting, a, we're getting a lot done and that will start going faster as we start doing it. Um, and we're very backed up because we didn't get, you know, like the best sellers from March, we just got. All those deliveries didn't come. Um, but the staff is in, is, you know, um, good morale. And a lot of that I think is just the way the town handles it. There has never been a moment that I didn't have information. There was never a question I didn't answer, I couldn't answer. There was never a moment when I didn't have someone to go to and say, well, what do you think this is? And in a situation like this, where so much is unknown, I think people really appreciate that. So I would say under the circumstances, things are great. <laughs> and I do, doing a terrible job of introducing people. Catherine McDonald is sorry. the library. No, that's, that's my fault. Um, I think something that you have underscored is that from the beginning of this, we've spoken with one voice and I don't think all communities have that that is so critical to do that in this type of emergency. So I'm glad that, that you've sensed that as well, Catherine, um, and feel supported. And it does, I think it helps the public too because what they see at the library is what they see at Sweet Bay and that's what they see at, at Town Hall. It's all, they're seeing the same thing everywhere. It's not somebody just doing one thing and everybody's not out on their own. Um, I see Jonathan has his hand up. Thank you, Madam Chair. J just a quick comment. I, I just wanted to express my appreciation, uh, Ms. McDonald, for, for you and for everything that the library staff has been doing in terms of the programming that's been ongoing uh, during this entire, entire period. Uh, it, it feels like there's not a day where I don't see some sort of live program you know, on Facebook or somewhere on social media where you guys are running something uh, both out of the children's department, but also some of the adult stuff that you've done as well. It, it's been incredibly impressive and, and really heartwarming to see how, how well uh, the libraries tried to stay connected with the community over the last several months. So, you know, great that we're now, you know, able to do curbside pickup and the deliveries, but uh, also really want to express my appreciation for everything that's gone on over the last couple of months as we've been in these sort of weird times. Thank you. I, I appreciate that because I think the staff has really risen to the occasion. Tonight I'm missing news and views, which is now up to 20 participants, which is, you know, everybody's home. And it typically doesn't run through the summer, but we're running all these things through the summer because everybody's home and they want things. The one other thing I'll mention is that all of the um, children's librarians are in touch with the, um, the librarians at the school department. So whatever those needs are, we we are you know if there's social emotional needs we can do something about if wherever we can fit in where we're on that um on that communication channel that's great thank you so much does anyone have any other um question or comment for Catherine? no well thank you so much for joining us and you know thank you it's always a gem of our town it continues to be so during these crazy you know chaotic times um so thank you very much Thank you for having me. Um, item number nine, we have a liquor license amendment. Uh, Crystal Community Club has a change of manager application. Steve, do you need to say anything more? Uh, no, I think if you want to turn this over to their attorney, Brian McGrail, it's pretty oh. straightforward. We see these all the time and Brian is on to represent the uh, Crystal Community Club. Their new manager is going to be, um, if approved, is going to be Kevin Lopes, who is well known to our community. He's one of our constables. So um, I'll leave it to Mr. McGrail. All right, take it, Brian, if you could introduce yourself, please. Sure, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, members of the council, for the record, uh, Attorney Brian McGrail representing uh, the Crystal Community Club. Uh, with us tonight on behalf of the Crystal Community Club is Kevin Lopes, who is the president of the club. Um, we actually have two applications before your board, uh, before your council tonight related to 
the Crystal Community Club's all alcohol license. Uh, the first uh, application relates to a change in offices and directors as reflected in the application that has been submitted to the council. Of the 10 directors that are being proposed, nine of them are Wakefield residents. One is a Linfield resident. Um, of those 10 directors, three would, will also serve as officers. Uh, Kevin Lopes would be the president. Uh, James Hahn is the treasurer and Nabil Nakul is the proposed clerk. So that's the first uh, that we've requested to do. Um, what I've found is when any applications go before the local liquor licensing authorities now, the ABCC requests that offices and directors be updated to be current. So that's the first part of the application uh, before you. The second uh, component is a request for a change in manager of the all alcohol license, as Mr. Mayor would mentioned. Uh, to, to designate Kevin Lopes as the uh, manager of the all alcohol license. Uh, Kevin is a, actually a high school classmate of mine, class of 1980 from Wakefield. Um, Kevin um, served as a deputy sheriff in Middlesex County from 2006 to 2013. Uh, currently he is a constable uh, for the town of Wakefield and he's actually served uh, as a constable for a total of approximately 14 years he took a little bit, he was originally took that uh, position in 1998, and then he left for a while to serve as deputy sheriff. And, and since leaving the sheriff's department, he's come back as a constable. Um, Kevin has been the hall manager, um, the function hall manager at the Crystal Community Club for approximately the past five years. He's also served as general manager of the Crystal Community Club for just over a year. Uh, Kevin is TIP certified. He plans on being at the Crystal Community Club for 40 plus hours a week. He has also completed his fingerprinting process with the police department. Um, and uh, we think uh, that he will serve as a great manager uh, and a responsible manager for the all alcohol license at a very successful club, the Crystal Community Club. So at the end of the day, Madam Chair, we're requesting uh, your consideration of two votes. First, to approve the offices and directors that have been uh, presented. And the second would be to uh, designate and allow Kevin Lopes to be the manager of the all alcohol license. Okay. Happy to answer any questions. And Kevin is here also for questions that you might have. Um, thank you, Brian. Does anyone have any questions regarding the appointment of the board and um, naming Kevin Lopes as the director, or the club manager, I'm sorry, in charge of the all alcohol license? No? Okay. So um, if I could have, um, we'll take them separately. If I can have um, the first motion to appoint Kevin Lopes as um, the manager of the all alcohol license of the Crystal Community Club. So moved. Moved and by Paul. Second. Second by um, Ed. Um, roll call vote. Uh, myself, yes. Uh, Paul. Yes. Ed. Yes. Nereen. Yes. Julie? Yes. Peter? Yes. And Jonathan? Yes. Um, so all seven vote um, in favor of that. And the second vote, Brian, are we, are we naming all of the board or just the few that you named? You're naming the entire board of directors. Out of the 10 board of directors that you are approving, mm -hmm. three of them are also uh, serving as officers, president, treasurer, and clerk. But Correct. they are also directors. Okay. Um, Tom, do we need to list the names or simply move to list the names as it, within the packet? Oh. Sorry, if, I'd appreciate it if you'd list the names for the record. Okay. Um, so Brian, I'm looking, is this Michael Tresco, John Dodo, those? Yeah, yes, yes, okay. yes. Yeah. So if I could have a motion to um, approve the board, uh, Michael Krusko, John Dodo, Nabil Nakul, Darren Conley, Stephen Lowry, Charles Benedetto, Christopher Nadone. Any, am I missing? Yeah, we're missing, you're gonna challenge me. Kevin, help me out here. We're missing you, right, Kevin Lopes? Oh, I'm sorry, I right here. Kevin Lopes, James Horn, Raymond Sanderson. Does that sound right? That's right. Okay. So could I have a motion please to list, to approve um, those um, folks I just read for the board of the three C's? 
So moved. Moved by Paul. Yeah. Seconded by Peter. Um, roll call vote. Myself, yes. Paul. Yes. Ed. Yes. Nereen. Yes. Dewey. Yes. Peter. Yes. And Jonathan. Yes. Okay. All seven vote in favor of that. Um, excellent. Congratulations, Mr. Lopes. Uh, um, Madam Chair, I don't know if, um, if, if we also needed a vote to approve the offices, which would be Kevin Lopes as president, James Hahn as treasurer, and um, Nabil Nakul as clerk. Um, if, sure, if you think- I would defer to town council on that. I'm just raising it as a possible issue. Yeah, um, it's a good point. Um, I'm not sure it's necessary, but we're here. Why don't we get it done? Right. Okay. Thank you. So um, if we could have a motion to um, approve the officers, Nabil Nakul, Kevin Lopes, remind me again, Brian? James Horn is treasurer. James Horn is treasurer. Um, so moved. Moved by Paul. Ten. Second by Peter. Um, any discussion? Roll call. Myself, yes. Paul. Yes. Ed. Yes. Irene. Yes. Julie. Yes. Peter. Yes. And Jonathan. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, members of the council. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Brian. And thank you, Kevin. Nice night. Um, moving to item number 10, which is a sewer bond. Um, I'm going to push this over to Steve. He has a little more information um, to present on this. Hey, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is part of our um, program that uh, we've got done for many years with the MWRA, where we actually get some grant money. Um, and we also borrow money from the MWRA at an interest rate of zero. So, um, which is kind of a great, uh, great little uh, deal that we have there. Um, and this is to shore up our sewer uh, lines to um, help remove any inflow and infiltration, which is other groundwater that comes into the sewer lines. And the council needs to, it's not only good practice, but we are charged by the MWRA based on the outflow that goes out. So when groundwater comes into our sewer line and goes out, it's metered by the MWRA and we're actually charged for it. So it's good that we have, you know, uh, solid sewer lines that don't allow any groundwater in. So we're not paying for it. So we've done this program for many years and this has allowed us to replace and line a lot of our lines. Um, so this, uh, I believe that uh, Director Conway did mention that this program may be going away uh, by the MWRA um, and was part of our, our water discussion, uh, water and sewer discussion, but hopefully it won't, but this is the last installment for this time anyway. So we're looking for authority to borrow $320,000, uh, which we paid up in 10 years, uh, installments of $32,000 each. And again, 32,000 is all that it is because it's interest only. I would certainly rather use somebody else's money than ours. And this goes on <laughs> top of the grant money that we've also re uh, obtained. So uh, what I'd like to do, Madam Chair, because the um, vote is rather lengthy, or the motion is I can read this and then perhaps um, someone can then um, uh, move it so we can move this along. Does that sound good to everybody? Sounds fine. The town of Wakefield, here, here on after call, the municipality in the county of Middlesex in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts promises to pay to the Massachusetts Water Resource Authority, hereafter called the authority or registered assigns the sum of $320,000 in installments on August 15th of each year as set forth below without interest. And this is in your packet uh, or substantial in your packet. Year 2021 through 2030, $32,000 each year annually. Principal payments on this bond are payable at the offices of the authority at 100 First Avenue, Charlestown Navy Yard, Boston, Massachusetts. Upon final payment of the principal of this bond, the authority shall cancel the bond and return it to the municipality. The bond is the only instrument representing a borrowing of $320,000 issued by the municipality pursuant to chapter 44 of the general law as amended and a vote of municipality duly passed on the fifth day of November, 2018. So this is the uh, final installment in something that we did a long time ago. The bond is issued for the purpose of defraying the costs of improvements in Ms. Powley's sewer system as described in said vote. Um, this bond is a general obligation of the municipality and the full faith and credit of the municipality is pledged for the payment of the principal in this bond as the same shall become due and payable. 
The bond is transferable upon presentation of the treasurer of the municipality with the written assignment duly acknowledged, approved. No transfer shall be effected unless made on the books of the municipality, kept by the treasurer as transfer agent and noted thereon by the treasurer with the record of payments. And it's further voted that each member, each member of the town council, the town clerk, and the town treasurer be and hereby are authorized to take any and all such actions and execute and deliver such certificates, receipts, or other documents as may be determined by them or any of them to be necessary or convenient to carry into effect the provisions of the foregoing vote. That's it. <laughs> for the <record. laughs> Do I have a motion for that? In a second? So moved. Moved by Jonathan, second by Yay. Peter. Um, roll call approval. Myself, yes. Or I'm um, strike that. Any discussion on what Steve just read? Uh, can I just one thing? This is paid out of the water and sewer rates, not the taxes, which I figured you guys would. Okay. Um, roll call vote. Myself, yes. Paul? Yes. Ed? Yes. Maureen? Yes. Julie? Yes. Peter? Yes. And Jonathan? Yes. Okay, all approval. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, and I would invite you all to, um, unfortunately, this does need to be signed, I think, uh, so we should sign this. I'll have them available at town hall, um, either in my office or our um, uh, greeter will have them. So if anybody, if once four pop by in the next few days, that would be great. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Um, Madam Chair, just a, a question uh, through you to uh, Mr. Mayo. Do you need signatures for all seven of us or just a majority of the council? Four. Four is great. Yeah. Great. Thank you. We can perhaps keep track when we have four. Yeah. And let I'll let you guys know. Yep. Go. I can certainly swing down. Um, item number 11, public hearings. We need to set a public hearing on for August 3rd, 2020 at 6.15 p.m. for a poll petition at 55 Court Street. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Paul. Okay. Seconded by Peter. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Um, uh, roll call. Myself, yes. Paul? Yes. Um, Ed? Yes. Uh, um, Maureen? Yes. Julie? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. And Peter? Yes. Thank you. Um, our second public hearing that we're setting is also for August 3rd, um, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. It's a liquor application for Ben 123 Incorporated. Um, Steve, can you remind us what that is? Sorry. I believe this is the bamboo house, if okay. I'm not mistaken. Thank you. Transfer of ownership. Great. Um, I need a motion and second on that, please. So moved. Moved by Paul. Second. Seconded by Peter. Um, roll call vote. Myself, yes. Paul? Yes. Ed? Yes. Maureen? Yes. Julie? Yes. Peter? Yes. And Jonathan? Yes. All approved. Thank you. Item number 12, we have um, some appointments authorizing, um, some temporary appointments. The first is to authorize town council clerk, Sherry, to advertise to fill two unexpired five-year terms on the planning board, one through April 2021 and one through April 2023. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Paul. Second. Seconded by Julie. Um, any discussion? Okay, roll call. Yeah, myself, yes. Paul? Yes. Ed? Yes. Maureen? Yes. Julie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Yes. So um, seven votes in favor. Um, the second is to authorize the appointment of Joseph Bragg as the vacation replacement of Inspector of Wires. Um, we do this every year so folks can take vacations. Um, exactly. Or if they're sick or something. Or right. right. Um, does anyone have any questions for Steve on this? Okay. Um, I need a motion and a second, please. Mm -hmm. Moved by Julie. Yeah. Seconded, seconded by Ed. Um, roll call. Myself, yes. Paul? Yes. Ed? Yes. Irene? Yes. Julie? Yes. Peter? Yes. And Jonathan? Yes. 
And lastly, we need to authorize the um, appointment of Sean Inman as the vacation replacement for the plumbing and gas inspector. I need a motion and a second, please. So moved. Moved by Paul. Second. Seconded by Julie. Um, roll call vote, myself, yes. Paul. Yes. Ed. Yes. Irene. Yes. Julie. Yes. Peter. Yes. And Jonathan. Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, item number 13, warrants. Um, Jonathan, is this still you? Uh, it is still me. Um, so I can just uh, briefly update the council. I did uh, review and sign warrants 49 through 52 uh, back on, on June 28th, a uh, total of $10.6 million, uh, details of which uh, are in the packet if folks have any questions. Does anyone have any questions of Jonathan? No? Okay. Um, item number 14 is any announcements any of us have? Oh. <laughs> Was that an acknowledgement of an announcement coming? Well, Jonathan has his hand up, so I'm going to Jonathan. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just briefly, and I know we touched upon this uh, during the updates from uh, Director Clay and, and Mr. Walsh, um, but with regard to uh, the, the plans for school reopening in the fall, I just wanted to remind uh, parents in the community that the Wakefield Public Schools did send out a survey uh, trying to collect some information on what our experiences have been, kind of good, bad, and ugly uh, with remote learning in the spring. Uh, and also asking folks to share some of their thoughts on, on the fall. So uh, if uh, folks that did receive that survey haven't had a chance to, uh, to do so, uh, would certainly ask, uh, ask to please uh, respond to that. I know they're, they're really looking forward to that, that information, that feedback from the community. Uh, just the other thing I wanted to mention uh, is the school department is also continuing to do uh, free lunches uh, available for, for students who need it. And so, uh, would encourage again anyone who uh, who does have that need or, or did have uh, free lunches for their kids uh, during the school year uh, to recognize that they're continuing to be distributed by the school department. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, Mayreen. Thank you. Uh, let's do that. Uh, just three quick updates. I'm going to be a broken record, but I just, um, I'm going to be a broken record until I can share all my amazing vegetables from my community garden plot with all of you. Um, but it looks amazing. Uh, Steve, pass on the thank you to Dan and the DPW. The shed is now in place. Um, I took my parents there this weekend and they were very impressed. Um, if anyone wants to walk by, just there is like four feet corn growing in other people's pots, yep. not mine. My corns, I don't have corn, but um, but it looks amazing. It's uh, just uh, pass on the thank you to Dan and the DPW. Um, as police liaison, I just wanted to recognize we swore in a new officer last week, Adam Smigelski. Um, it sounds good, uh, was sworn in, his whole family was there. His father is actually also a police officer, so it was great. Um, and uh, Chair Santos and Steve were also there as Betsy swore in the new officer. So just wanted to congratulate him and welcome him to Team Wakefield. And on that note, um, just something to think about as we've all kind of gotten used to this Zoom world. One of the things, Steve, that we uh, postponed um, because of COVID was Wakefield 101, which I know is like a beloved thing that we started. And I'm just wondering if we try to do something in the fall, we could, you know, keep it virtual, not have everyone meet, but have nonprofits and department heads and you and us all kind of speak and invite people new to town. It's such a weird time to move to town and I'd love to think about how we welcome them. So something, and I'm happy to work with you and Sherry you. and Catherine um, on that in the chamber, but just something I, I think about new people moving and uh, just how we could take that awesome experience and maybe make it virtual, do a little singing and dancing as I look at Tom Mullins over there. So. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Maureen, what are you growing? I have cucumber and pe peppers and zucchini. Ooh. 
Yeah, it was a little late in the season, but I and I and I I'm going to share these stories every meeting, but um, we have created a really great community vibe. And so you will see kids there. You will see older people who are just walking, like just observing and looking at what everyone's growing. Um, there's, you know, tons of basil and parsley and cilantro, but it is, we, we created something pretty great. I'm really impressed with it. Um, my dad who lives in North Reading was going to write his board of selectmen to see when they can do it over there. Um, but yeah, so hopefully soon you will see, I will get peppers and uh, maybe a zucchini or two to share. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much for that update. Um, I had um, Julie, then Ed, then Paul. Can you not? Okay, I'll go to Paul first. Are you there? <laughs> Got it. Okay. Julie's on. Hey, Julie, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Um. So, um, the Megan Burnett softball tournament was this weekend. Was the absolutely the first weekend that we could do softball, and I would say it was less of a tournament, more of a competition, and very low key. Um, but really, really nice, and so wonderful to see Blatt's Field being used. Um, by teams from all over the region, including a Wakefield team of seniors who didn't get to play their varsity yeah. senior season. So um, Steve, please pass on thanks to DPW and Dennis Fazio. And it was just a, um, it was a great weekend. For that. Um, my second item is that hallelujah, the plastic bag ban has been lifted. So, <laughs> um, uh, you know, you still may need to tell the stores, but um, yeah, you can take usable bags back into the stores now. Um, we've collected almost 400 pounds of plastic bags over the last few weeks at Town Hall. Thank you, Steve, and everybody there for your patience. We're going to figure out what the next steps are, but hopefully there won't be as many now that the bag ban has been. Great. Excellent. Um, Paul. Oh, sorry. I said Ed was next. Ed, Ed next. Yep. Enough. Uh, first off, I'm, in, I'm entirely jealous of Councilor Chines again having that warrant gig. I don't know how that came to be, but <laughs> nice work on that. Um, it, I just it wanted can to be all yours, Ed. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> I just wanted to say um, uh, thank you to everybody in Wakefield for a um, tremendous showing of, of patriotism on, on the 4th. It was really great. Although we didn't have the parade, we had great um, red, white, and blue all over town. And I know that everyone was. Um, you know, really feeling the spirit as much as you could, despite the fact that we weren't there for the parade this year. But I know that the parade is coming back bigger and better than ever for the 75th next year. And I know that the West Side Social Club is also doing a lot to make sure that that's, that's going to be a great event next year. So I guess we're all kind of counting down the days now, less than a year to go um, for that. Um, and with that, that's all I've got. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks, Ed. Um, Paul. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I just have a, just a couple of uh, uh, updates and um, uh, a question of concern. The first uh, update is, um, as my wife and I do more and more walking within the community, uh, we've noticed a, a lot of different areas that I like to report to Steve as to what we find and if the DPW could possibly take a look at them. Um, there is another storm drain that is, uh, appears to be compromised, Mr. Mayo, at the uh, intersection of Roosevelt and Montrose. If um, you could possibly have the DPW take a quick peek at that and have them check it out, that'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, the other matter I want to bring to the attention of town council is um, something disturbing that has happened now twice in the downtown in two weeks. There's been a break-in in a robbery in one of our businesses, um, and I find it disturbing that one, it happened the the first time, but to, to be brazen enough that a second robbery occurred a week and a half later is even more disturbing. Is there anything that we can do to beef up security at night in the downtown? Um, I, I, this, this, it's never happened before. And all of a sudden now there's been, I, I hear it from other communities, Melrose, Malden, Wakefield, is there anything that we can do, though, to uh, 
beef up the downtown or the business areas at night. I mean, everyone's wearing masks these days. <laughs> it makes it even harder now to say on camera that they spot someone, even if they did spot, uh, spot someone. Um, I don't know, Steve, what do you think on this matter? I will, uh, I will talk to Chief Scorey. Okay, so uh, it's, uh, it's, like I said, it's very disturbing that the first time I heard the news, but to hear it that it happened a second time, I, 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 something has to be done to deter it, in my opinion. Um, those are the only two matters I have, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, thanks, Paul. I also think we have to be careful about, without knowing all the details, um, as to what's happening down there. But I'm sure, I know Chief Scorey is aware of it, um, and, and certainly we'll look into that. Um, any other? I just had a couple of things. Uh, I had mentioned this to Steve. If, if outdoor dining is going to be something that may continue, um, and I think a lot of places are looking to see a lot of municipalities that maybe this is something, a uh, result of COVID that might be able to stay. Uh, I think we need prettier borders. So having eaten in Andover recently outside, they have these beautiful, Ed, you would be so excited. Where are you? They're like white with flower boxes. They're all the same. Um, they are lovely and they give a sense really of an outdoor eating area as opposed to um, Jersey barriers. So it's something to think about if, if, this, is, if this is going to continue, maybe we zhuzh it up a little bit. Um, and just to go on that, Salem painted their Jersey barriers, which also looked pretty impressive and they let uh, local people in town almost like adopt a Jersey barrier. And they looked not as great as white fences and flowers, but um, kind of like a cool thing of, of kind of like the windows that we paint during the holidays, like something like that. So no, that's, I think those are good things to think about if we're going to keep it to have some sort of consistency to make we're doing so much downtown and we have, you know, future plans to make it look cohesive. Um, I also wanted to, I've been working and speaking with a, a young woman at the high school. Um, she's a rising junior, um, Emanuela Desaro, who um, is a really impressive young woman. She has arranged for um, a um, fundraiser or to drop off school supplies for students that don't have them, looking towards area, not just in Wakefield, but, but a lot of um, folks in Boston looking for donations of pencils and pens and um, notebooks. She's a, a pretty remarkable young woman. She also worked on the march that we had um, back in, back in um, not too long ago. Um, so once I get details on that, I'll just share it with counselors, um, maybe to, to spread the word. But this is a young woman who really is, is trying to do things for her community. Um, and we need more of that. Um, that's all I have for announcements. Uh, Madam Chair, yeah. did you want to also advertise for the HRC? I was going to do that combined. The matter's not anticipated. Oh, but okay, okay, yeah. that's fine. I'm sorry. No, I, not at I, all. I jumped up. I jumped up. <laughs> trying to fit it in its right spot. Um, so for item number 15, matters not anticipated for the agenda. One of the items that I meant to put on this um, on this agenda, but it was my fault um, for forgetting that, is that we are announcing for, uh, we are um, advertising for members to fill the Human Rights Commission um, for potential um, interviewing and a vote that will likely happen in September. So we'll advertise, we'll collect the resumes, we'll work together with the school committee um, and the, the HRC and then um, likely have appointments because we have interviews um, in the, our September meeting. So do we need a vote on that, Steve? I think if you just instruct us to do that, that's fine. Sure, okay, sounds good. Sherry, are you good on that? Yep, yes. I'm all set. All right, thanks, Sherry. And sorry that I forgot that. Um, does anyone else have any matters not anticipated within 48 hours? No. All right. So it looks like um, a motion to adjourn. So moved. 
Moved by Paul. Second. Seconded by Jonathan. Um, roll call myself. Yes, Ed. Yes. Counselor. Um, <laughs> it says Counselor Maureen, so I keep wanting to call you Counselor as yours. <laughs> yes. yes. Julie. Yes. Peter. Yes. Jonathan. Yes. And Paul. Thank you. Yes. Um, thanks, everyone, for watching, and um, we look forward to seeing you at our next meeting. Thank you.